Yo, welcome to Swank View TV. I'm your host, Swank. Today, we're going to be talking about marketing and branding, perceived value versus quality materials and craftsmanship. How much does your favorite brand spend to manufacture their products? Is it quality products or is it just the popularity of it, the shiny package and the uh, a celebrity that's attached to it that's making it pop? Rubber now brand Nike spends an average of $28.50 to make a shoe that will sell for $100. The average $100 Nike shoe are sold to wholesalers for $50. So Nike will make $21.50 per pair. And that $21.50 is not all profit because they're a huge company and they have massive overhead. Just to run the company is crazy. As a result, each $100 shoe sold, the final profit for Nike is $4.50 per unit. After all that. After all that, I just explained to you, the, over, the total average profit per unit is $4.50. The Nike Air Max 2016 cost $33 to make, but sold retail for $190. The Nike Free Run 2016 cost Nike $18 to make and sold for $100. That's a 500% markup. Understand to do real business and have financial literacy is beyond just I bought this and I sell this for the profit because like they say once you adding an overhead and shipping or somebody dropped it off for you um, somebody packaging it for you somebody putting it together for you or getting the parts for you and you assemble it whatever that co those those are costs and you're gonna uh, uh, you're gonna um, begin to you're gonna begin to uh, have more extra costs from overhead it's gonna start to add up Everything someone do for you has a cost. And you need to understand that. And you're going to have to pay just like you want to get paid for what you do, your part or whatever the case it is, whatever you're selling, whether it's a service or a product. Understand that. Every year in the United States, the cosmetic industry generates $50 billion in revenue. $50 billion selling lipstick and, and skincare products and stuff like that. I say that to say... The, the actual, once again, the product itself, the quality of the product, whether it's supposed to be botanicals or whatever it's supposed to be, that don't have anything to do with anything. It don't even have to be that. It don't have to be some special botanical soil, aloe from overseas in Hawaii or Malaysia or something like that. It don't even got to be that, for real. It can be some they make here, synthetic, that they just know how to recreate and put the same fragrance in and the same texture. You understand? It ain't even a quality that, that, that you're paying for. You're paying for the shiny package once again. Or if it's a, it's a celebrity like Oprah attached to this CoverGirl lip gloss, it's going to sell like crazy because Oprah attached to it. If it's good enough for Oprah, then it's good enough for you. And that's the attitude with these marketers and marketing. Uh, these are attitudes of the people who work in marketing and branding. It's to get the sure sale and to make sure that it's attached to someone or something big a big cause or, or a big influential person or public figure. It's not about the quality of the product. The cosmetic company doing 50 to 60 percent markups. That's crazy. And the big, big companies doing 60 to 80 percent markups. That's even more crazy. The big ones, the Revlons, the, the Couple Girls, the Maybellines, the Mac and all that, whatever. That's the um, you can actually go to the to a, your local drugstore and get cheaper products, maybe in less fancy packages that basically do the same thing. And I ain't telling you to be cheap and skimp out on quality if you feel like you got this. Or some of the products might actually have the botanical oils and the special honeys and all that stuff they be saying they having on products. But the bottom line is, sometimes that's not the case. And more times than not, you will find out if you do the research that it's really like that. You're paying for the name, 
the shiny package, the celebrity or cause attached to it. Think about it. That's how you understand the difference between perceived value and quality and craftsmanship, the quality of the materials, the expensive stuff that they got from overseas and brought over here from some fancy mountain or something to make this fancy stuff for your body, your face, or whatever the case. That's the, that's the cost. Shipping that over here, extracting that and shipping that over here. That's why it's so expensive. Then processing it into this with some other natural ingredients. That's why it's so high. That makes sense. But they're just making this up in the lab, stirring it up, putting the same scent in there, and charging you that same price. But it's not the same quality. That's perceived value versus quality. Last but not least, um, designer out the designer eyewear. Italian company Luxottica own and control a very very large portion of the eyewear industry. They really really monopolize the market to the point that I'm sorry to bust your bubble, but um, the same glasses from Pearl Vision, the basic was like 80, 50, 80 bucks. The same ones. Them the same, them the same, same machines. Cause Lux, Luxottica, Luxottica makes Gucci frames, Chanel frames, Prada frames, Oakley frames, and like I said, the regular Smegler Pearl frames, Cheetah Girl frames, Spider Man frames. They make frames for everybody, and this gonna flip you out. He got actually got the numbers for you. The same $80 glasses you pay, you get from Pearl Vision cost Luxottica four to nine dollars to make. Four to nine dollars. You will pay roughly eighty to one hundred and twenty dollars for these type of frames. The more expensive five hundred, eight hundred, nine hundred dollar frames like Chanel and Prada and all of that cost Luxottica between seventeen and thirty seven dollars to make. 17, so $37, they charge you $480, man. And they all made on the same machine. Ain't no special crafting from Chanel on those items, on those glasses, from Prada, from whoever. No disrespect to none of them companies um, or any other company for that, for that matter. The point of the matter is, just because they put the fancy name, it's nothing... It's nothing proprietary about it beyond a logo and emblem. And maybe certain levels of craftsmanship. That's why it's thirty-seven dollars and the basic frames are 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 on I mean thirty-seven dollars for those and for the basic frames it's only like seven dollars to make, nine dollars to make. But the difference is they all coming off the same machine using probably just some different kind of materials, probably a little more higher materials on the upper class stuff. And maybe a little handwork for putting the emblems on or screwing something in a certain way. But other than that, they all coming off the same machine, off the same press, and they costing $37 and you paying $450 gladly. I'm not knocking it. Hey, get your money. Hey, you get it. For you know, I get I get it. I, I totally understand. I'm just letting you guys know what's going on and how much it costs and how Luxottica has a monopoly, total domination from perceived value. Because it's Gucci, it say Gucci on the side, you gonna pay 450, but that's the same plastic they use in them regular frames that you gonna pay $80 for. Perceived value versus quality, materials, and craftsmanship. I ain't gonna go too far. I think I'm gonna leave it at that. I just wanted to give y'all a quick understanding of how this stuff works. Just a light course on financial literacy. Real light. You know, it's all about the upliftment and empowerment. Getting to the next level. And um, just staying positive. Working hard. Thank you for watching Swank View TV. I've been your host, Swank. Like. Smack that boy. Please smack that like. Comment. Subscribe. Comment down below. Let me know how you feel about what I said. Really process what I said. Rewind it. Listen to what I said. Listen to the equations and the problems that I that I used. Not for bragging purposes. Understand what I'm saying and how it actually works when you break it down. 
It ain't dollar for dollar. It ain't I spend 10, make 15, and I keep the whole 15. You spend 10, you make 15. You got to get him a dollar, him 50 cent, him 40 cent, him the other 10 cent. That's two. Then you got to get your free of 65, and then you got your own expenses once you get home. That's overhead. It ain't all your money. You don't get to keep it all because you bought a product and sold it. If other people helped you get to that point of selling it, then you have to pay them too, and that comes out of the profit. So like I said, that $20 profit, once you pay everyone, may, might become a $6 profit. You have to understand and be prepared for that. You might have to give up $14 out of your profit. You get 20 bucks, you might have to give out 14 and you keep six. And those the three, those the three um, simple examples, easy examples to understand, to begin to understand overhead and really how it goes when you out here dealing with, with money, whether it's small or big. You need to understand these basic fundamentals. Nike spending $30 to make $5. Cosmetic industry got it on lock with the perceived value, making some appear bigger than what it is, but it's really not the quality. And the eyewear company has a monopoly, a total domination of the market, with perceived value as well, by putting a Chanel sign on the side, selling you some $8 glasses for $465. Once again, thank you for watching Swank View TV. I've been your host, Swank. Smack that like, share, comment down below, good, bad, happy, sad, subscribe to all my social media, if you want to support the growth of my channel, support me, Swank UTV, Swank.